the Salaf and the Sahaba, they used to verbally teach their children the, the Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just as you learn and teach Surah Al-Fatiha verbally, the Salaf, they used to verbally teach their children the Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they used to teach them that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and he was born in Mecca, and they should do this so that this young child, he grows up upon the method of the Prophet وسلم, traversing the path of the Prophet So I want each one of you to mention some aspect from the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, which had a personal effect or impact in your life. So the brother mentioned the story of Taif, meaning when the Prophet وسلم, when he went to Taif to call them to Islam, and the people of Taif, they rejected him. And not only did they reject him, but they ordered their young and their foolish to hurt and harm the Prophet وسلم. And this was the most severe trial or test which the Prophet وسلم, faced. And yet, he, وسلم, he remained patient. And also the beautiful manners that the Prophet وسلم, had when interacting with his wives. And that the Prophet وسلم, he was always in the service of his family. And the Prophet وسلم, he used to say that the best of you are those who are best to their families and I am the best amongst you to my family. And the Prophet وسلم, those matters or those tasks which related to him and were his responsibility, he used to fulfill them. The Prophet وسلم, he lived 23 years as a prophet and a messenger. And the five obligatory prayers, they were legislated upon the Prophet وسلم, three years before he migrated to Al-Madina. And since, or from the beginning of the time of his Prophet to his death, he continued calling the people to Tawheed and warning them against the shirk. And even when the Prophet وسلم, he was in his final illness from which he died and he was in his deathbed, he would be warning the people against shirk. Now the treaties at al hudaybiyah The treaty of al hudaybiyah when the Sahaba, they were going towards Mecca wearing the ihram in order to perform Umrah and they were prevented from doing so. And so the Prophet وسلم, he ordered his companions to come out of Ihram because they are no longer entering into Mecca. And nobody moved. They did nothing. And the Prophet وسلم, he went to his wife Umm Salama anha, and he complained to his wife Umm Salama anha, regarding the reaction of the people that he has ordered them to do something and nobody has moved. And so Umm Salama anha, his wife she advised him to go out in front of the people and shave his hair, meaning to demonstrate this physically in front of everybody. And so when the Prophet وسلم, did so, then everybody else followed him. And from the benefits of this story is that the Prophet وسلم, he used to seek counsel and advice from his companions. And sometimes some husbands, they say, I'm not going to listen to anything from my wife, I'm not going to accept any of her opinions. The Prophet وسلم, he only performed one Hajj. And this only Hajj which the Prophet وسلم, performed, this is called Hajjatul Wida, the farewell pilgrimage. Because the Prophet وسلم, he would bid people farewell and he would say, perhaps I will not meet you again after this year. And this is how it occurred. Because when the Prophet وسلم, when he returned to al Madina after this Hajj, then he slowly he became ill and this was his, the illness of his death. The Prophet وسلم, he was afflicted with many struggles and many calamities. However, these calamities would not impact him by the permission of Allah. He was born as an orphan والسلام, his father died before he was born. And then his mother also passed away a short while after his birth. And then he was taken under the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. And then also Abdul Muttalib passed away. 
and then he was taken under the care of his uncle Abu Talib and Abu Talib also passed away and then his loving wife Khadija radiallahu anha she also passed away and all the children of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away during his lifetime except Fatima radiallahu anha his daughter who died after his death by only six months approximately and so these calamities and these afflictions one after the other none of them had an impact upon the mental state of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam none of them stopped him fulfilling his da'wah and who can mention for me the children of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so these seven are the children of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the father of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam his name was Abdullah and the grandfather of the Prophet, the grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam his name was Abdul Muttalib and the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was Abu Talib and also Hamza and so the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam it goes back to Ismail the son of Ibrahim may peace and salutation be upon them and upon our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, the slander which was made by the people of nifaq the people of hypocrisy against ummul mu'minin aisha radiyallahu anha and they intended by this to slur the abu bakr radiyallahu anha father and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so they intended tarih was not aisha radiyallahu anha rather it was her father abu bakr and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself and when this occurred there was a house amongst the houses of the ansar and the husband said to his wife that we believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has chosen aisha radiyallahu anha to be the wife of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said this to his wife and he said and so i believe and we believe that aisha radiyallahu anha she is better than you and his wife replied yes So then he said would you commit such an action this fahisha this indecency would you do this and she said no so he said then it's impossible for you not to do this action and then she who is better than you by your own admittance for her to do this action i say that and so they knew that aisha radiyallahu anha was innocent of this without even knowing anything regarding the story and similar when it comes to the sahaba So if we know and we admit and we appreciate that the sahaba are better than us then it's not possible for them to do those actions that we would refrain from and for this reason those that confusion which occurred amongst the sahaba alayhim radhiyallahu after the death of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not permitted for us to delve into any of it allah subhanahu he chose for the companions the sahaba to be the best of the people the best of mankind after the prophets and the messengers and from amongst the sahaba the companions allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose abu bakr radiyallahu anhu to be best amongst them and abu bakr radiyallahu anhu he was as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him the second of the two in the cave meaning he was the only one who made hijra and accompanied the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when making hijra Allah subhanahu wa mentioned in the Quran laqad ja'akum verily there has come to you meaning by Allah verily for sure there has come to you a messenger from amongst yourselves meaning a messenger who is a human who is like you a human being but that which he was distinguished above us that he was given the risala the message or the revelation from the heaven and then Allah subhanahu wa described him Aziz alayhi ma aniktum the difficult upon him that which you must bear meaning that which harms or hurts you it harms and hurts the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and for this reason he was diligent and took every care in guiding us away from everything which hurts or harms us and the greatest and most severe of this is a shit and also that he tried his <coughs> utmost to guide us towards where there is our benefit and there is our goodness and this is from the saying of Allah hariṣun alaykum meaning also focused 
on your betterment and your salvation. If we consider the responsibilities which the Prophet ﷺ was tasked with, and what were those responsibilities that the Prophet ﷺ was given? Firstly, he was a prophet and a messenger, Nabi and a Rasul, and that he would receive revelation from Jibreel. He would memorize the Quran, and he was also the leader of the state, and he was the interior minister and the minister of defense. And he was the Imam of the Masjid, and he was the teacher, and he was also the one who gave, and at the same time he used to take care after his family. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ, he played various roles and fulfilled various responsibilities. And despite all of these responsibilities and roles, he fulfilled every single one in the best and most perfect manner. And perhaps you only you if you were to be given only one role. But one responsibility that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given, you would not be able to follow. But Allah placed barakah for our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his time and his actions and his efforts. And Allah Subhanahu He chose the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be the best and most virtuous amongst the Prophets. And Allah Subhanahu chose for him this religion, this perfect religion, and the religion through him which is perfect. And it's the final religion. And also Allah subhanahu wa decreed for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best and most virtuous of companions and wives. And also to be born in the best of cities, i.e. the city of Makkah. And, and he was the most noble of people in lineage, meaning the most noble lineage of, amongst the people was the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was the best of them in his character and his manners. And so... This is a great honor for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it is also a great honor for his Ummah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being honored and elevated is also the Ummah being honored and elevated. So then after all of this, how can it be that you don't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you don't follow his guidance, you don't live your life according to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, you should be pleased and delighted that Allah chose you to be the followers of this noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the most sincere in advice from amongst the creation towards creation, meaning there's no other created being who was more sincere than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam towards creation. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was the most worshipping of the people towards Allah subhanahu wa meaning there's nobody who can come after him who is equal to the worship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never mind being more worshipping of Allah than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anybody who comes after him, without doubt, they are less worshipping and less pious than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And neither is it possible or permitted for a person to oppose or turn away from the Sunnah of the Prophet And it's not permitted for a Muslim to increase above the Sunnah of the Prophet and neither to be deficient in anything from the Sunnah of the Prophet Okay, inshallah, because we have I've been on a long journey for the past few days and then there's a lesson in, uh, after Asr as well, we're going to stop there today with this lesson. Um, the Shaykh has further lessons in Masjid Tawheed in Hyde, which is after Asr, and then and also in Masjid Salam, which area? I think Rosh Hashanah, and also Masjid Salam in, in uh, Moss Side uh, after Maghrib. So the Shaykh will be teaching Usul al in Masjid Tawheed in Hyde and Tafsir of the Shortest Surah of the Quran in Masjid Salam. Some people they say it wasn't my intention. I didn't, I didn't have any bad will. It was just a joke. Yeah.
in Tekasim Din or Ta'in Fi Din. So the question of the brother was, the question of the brother was that when it comes to mocking or joking about something from Islam, what if a person says, but it wasn't my intention to actually joke about Islam, I didn't intend anything, I wasn't insulting Islam, just mere light-hearted comments. And the Sheikh answered, well, that was there nothing remaining for them to joke about except Allah or his deen? In fact, the story behind this ayah, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ In which Allah says, say, is it regarding Allah and his ayah, and his mentioned that you were joking about? The story of this ayah, that when the, the, this ayah was revealed regarding those people who said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we were only talking, like travelers talk, just trying to fill our time, and we did not intend to joke about the religion. And the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, he mentioned that three matters, when they are mentioned with seriousness, then they are serious. And when they are mentioned light-hearted, they remain serious. And amongst those three matters is joking about the religion. Why? Because it leads to apostasy. This same person, would he amuse and laugh over his father and then say, but I was only amusing about my father? By Allah, he would not do so. But when it comes to religion of Islam, then it's easy for him to joke around regarding it. Yeah, Allah, Allah.